Hi everyone, welcome to this physics course, the SI unit for mass by Kaustaban, that's me. Please do subscribe and share with your friends on YouTube and uh, log in free to my website physicsmodels.in. The SI unit of mass is kilogram, symbol is kg. Just a reminder that 1 kg is the mass which is defined as the amount of matter in a body. The weight is a different thing and weight is the force with which this matter is attracted towards the center of the earth. For a mass of 1 kg, the weight would be 1 into g acceleration due to gravity that's 9.81 meters per second square. So the weight would be 9.81 newtons which is a pure force. The definition of mass started from the 1790s and one kilogram mass was defined as the mass of a cubic meter of pure water at 4 degrees centigrade divided by 1000. If one cubic meter of water had a mass of 1000 kilograms, one thousandth of that would be exactly equal to one kilogram. This experimental measurement had of course a lot of errors as you can see. In 1793, scientists at that time agreed to have the first physical kilogram mass. This became the first prototype and all such physical prototypes are called as artifacts in scientific literature. This piece had a mass of exactly one kilogram. It went out of fashion many years later, but it's still kept as a museum piece in the NIST USA. In 1799, the artifact that you saw in the previous slide got modified to platinum material. There was no other change in the concept of having a physical prototype. And this platinum prototype lasted for almost 100 years as an international reference. On May 20th, 1875, the scientists changed the material to an alloy of 90% platinum and 10% iridium. This piece was called the International Prototype Kilogram. The concept was still the same, to have an artifact as a master reference for one kilogram. A beautiful photograph of the platinum iridium cylinders kept at the NIST. As I pointed out the inaccuracies in the previous slide, in this slide I am once again pointing out that the mass of these weights, although they were kept inside glass jars and carefully controlled, noticed some changes and these changes were later analyzed as due to some airborne particles sticking to these cylinders. It was very difficult to control that and uh, the scientists of course put in procedures for steam cleaning and washing them before recalibrating them. It was a painful procedure. It was quite clear that physical artifacts are not the way forward. Therefore, in the year 2011, the scientists decided that physical artifacts are no longer okay and they agreed to define mass much more accurately in terms of nature's constants. Planck's constant is one such thing and we will go into that in detail in the subsequent slides. But the value of that Planck's constant was varying with different measurements. So the committee gave six years to everyone to come up with their best measurements of the Planck's constant. In 2017, after looking at everybody's measurement, the scientists finally agreed for a value of the Planck's constant as below. H is equal to 6.62607050 into 10 to the power minus 34 kg meter square per second. This measurement was done using the Kibble balance. 
Before getting into the detail of what is Planck's constant, I wanted to mention that the accurate value of the Planck's constant itself was found using the Kibble balance by putting in a known mass of very accurate value. So the Kibble balance is such that if you put in an accurate mass of known value, then you can get an accurate value of Planck's constant. So collecting everybody's result, the scientists decided on one value of Planck's constant as shown. Thus, by May 20th, 2019, the latest definition of one kilogram mass was released by the scientists as follows. The kilogram is the SI unit of mass and is defined by taking the fixed numerical value of the Planck's constant H to be 6.6260 etc. when expressed in the unit joule second which is equal to kilogram meter square per second where the meter and the second are defined in terms of C the speed of light and delta VCS which is the frequency of the cesium-133 atom. The words in blue are the definition, the official definition. However, nobody could understand how is that related to mass. So I'll now explain that in detail, starting with what is Planck's constant energy quanta and so on. Let's now try to understand Planck's constant and in the context of Einstein's equation. In 1900, Max Planck found that the electromagnetic radiation from a black body has nothing to do with the material of the black body. Rather, the radiation has an energy E which is proportional to the frequency of the radiation only, frequency being nu. Since energy is proportional to nu, the constant of proportionality was called H, came to be called as Planck's constant. So energy was equal to H into nu. Let's keep this on one side. Five years later, Einstein came up with his world famous equation E is equal to mc square, where the energy was the energy contained in a body at rest, something sitting on the table, or it could be a photon moving at high speed. In that case, it would be kinetic energy. The E equal to mc squared covered both kinetic energy and rest mass energy. And E was equal to m into c squared, where c is the speed of light. In Einstein's equation, energy and mass became related. In Planck's equation, energy and frequency became related. I found a photograph where Albert Einstein is receiving the Planck medal from Max Planck himself. That's interesting. Einstein also was working on quantum mechanics and made a great contribution to it. He discovered that light also travels in packets or quanta, many quantum make a quanta. And he also applied quantum theory to specific heat of solids. Now, to make things simple, we can apply Einstein's equation to a photon. We can also apply Planck's equation to the photon. So, we will get mc squared is equal to h nu. And m is the mass of the photon, c is the speed of light, h is Planck's constant and nu is the frequency of radiation of the photon. Every photon has an associated frequency with it. Because light is both a particle and a wave, due to that duality, you will see photons having both a particle behavior and a wave-like behavior. That's why we get the frequency out there. So suddenly we can see that mass and frequency have got related. mc squared is equal to h nu. So if you know m and you know h, then you can find nu and so vice versa. The next step was that scientists wanted to do a practical experiment to check the linkage between mass and Planck's constant. This discussion took place in 1975 because the Kibble balance, a key piece of equipment, was invented in 1975 and not before that. In the year 1980, the next five years that is, scientists were actually able to 
work with the Kibble balance to determine Planck's constant from a given mass. So if E is equal to mc square is equal to h nu for a given mass and c is anyway known, frequency could be very accurately measured in those days. The unknown was h and scientists were able to measure it very accurately. Then the question arose that from h can we measure mass? Here is a beautiful picture of a complex Kibble balance thanks to an IST. You can see how complicated that looks. The next step was the scientists agreed that yes it looks feasible to arrive at that magical 1 kg of mass starting from Planck's constant using a Kibble balance. However, three conditions must be met by whoever is doing this huge experiment. First condition, three readings must give an error of less than 50 parts per billion. Second, one of these three readings should have an error of less than 20 parts per billion. And third condition being every reading should have a high confidence level of greater than 95%. It took till the mid of 2017 for scientists to meet this condition using the Kibble balance. They could measure the mass very accurately starting from Planck's constant. With this confidence, the scientist community issued the new standard in 2019. Let's now come back to the SI definition of 1 kg mass and I think we are more clear as to what it means. We are now confident and it says the kilogram is the SI unit of mass, that's fine and it's defined by taking the fixed numerical value of the Planck's constant when expressed in the unit joule second which is kg meter square per second where the meter and the second are defined in terms of speed of light and delta VCS which is the frequency emitted by the cesium-133 atom. Now I hope you are clear how the mass came to be defined in terms of Planck's constant. To understand meter and second please refer to my other videos. Thanks for your uh, attention. Looks like a few photons are flying over the deep blue ocean. Uh, please do share this video with your friends on YouTube and other social media. Uh, please do log in to my website physicsmodels.in and otherwise have fun and have a great day. Thank you.